Hi there. This is Forrest Judd, MCAT Solutions Engineer with Hayerman & Company. Um, I'd like to take some time today to discuss a problem a lot of inventor users have. They probably tend to ignore it. Um, revolve around the idea of styles. Now this especially happens maybe when you upgrade to a new release of Inventor. You migrate your carefully created templates you start a new drawing and you see a dialog box that looks like this, the style conflict dialog box. Now many users may tend to just say don't ever show me this again and ignore the problem, but this really is a problem. This dialog box, what it's telling you is that some style in your, in this case drawing, um, is different from what the inventor style library uh, thinks it should be. And in that case, whatever the style library says it should be is going to win. So any customizations you have made to your template will be overwritten. So if you're new to Inventor, if you're not familiar with how styles work, it may be something that has confused you, how you change some styles in your template, uh, you save it as a template, and when you start a new document from that template, all of the changes you made don't seem to stick. And that can be very confusing. Uh, so let's take a look at maybe the right way uh, to customize your styles such that that problem doesn't happen to you in the future. So if we look at our styles editor here in Inventor, um, our drawings have lots of different styles, right? Styles for our dimensions, for our balloons, for our layers, for our leaders. And we have certain styles available to us out of the box. They're default definitions for all of these styles. The number one rule when you're customizing your templates is never modify any of these out-of-the-box styles. If you do so, you'll have to update your style library to match those definitions, which is non-trivial. Um, and then from year to year as you upgrade, you'll have to remember to migrate those styles um, over, otherwise your customizations will again be lost. So the right approach is to always create your own styles here. And we'll save the you know, particular customizations of each style for a different day. But there are a couple of key things to remember when you're talking about styles, especially when we're dealing with drawing styles. Because our styles don't exist in a vacuum. Our dimension styles, our datum target styles, our revision table styles, um, these are all related to objects. Right? And when you place an object, uh, be it a dimension or a table or what have you, um, there will always be a style that, Auto that Autodesk Inventor chooses to apply to that object to start with. That style is dictated by our object defaults. Right? So when we put down an angle dimension, for example, the style that's going to be applied to it by default is the default ANSI style. Um, but note that the object defaults is itself a style. So this is something you also want to avoid customizing the standard definition of because if you customize this and don't create your own object defaults, that's going to defeat the purpose. You won't have your default styles applied to the objects. Um, but then things go one level higher when we talk about the idea of our standard, right? Because the standard is also itself a style. The standard dictates things about how our drawings look, our line weights, our view preferences, you know, first or third angle projection what styles are available for use, but also what object default style is used by default. Right? So if your goal is to create your own custom drawing template with your own custom styles for the way you want things to look, your first step is to always create your own standard. And make it active. From there, create your own custom object defaults.
and then make sure that your company standard is using your company object defaults. From there, create your own styles with their own names. And then of course customize those styles as necessary. By doing that we have created our own styles in our template. We have not modified any of the out-of-the-box styles. And so we save this as our good template. We should no longer see any sort of warning dialog indicating that our styles have been overwritten. Now in complex multi-user environments, you may then choose to save your custom styles up to your style library. You know, that's something that you can do. But by remembering to always create your own custom standard, your own custom object defaults, and your own custom styles with their own names, you can avoid them being overwritten by the default style library, and your drawings will behave more consistently. Again, this is Forrest Judd with Hagerman & Company, and thanks for watching.